Hi, welcome back to Brooks's Bass Corner and my Essential Bass Album series. Looking back at albums that, in my view, are essential listening for any bass player. It might be an album that sold millions worldwide and thrust the bassist onto megastardom, or it might be an album that didn't sell particularly well, but cut a niche for a particular bassist to propel the band or artist onto greater things. Or it might just be a great album in terms of the bass performance. Either way, I think these albums deserve your attention. And perhaps by watching this video you might be intrigued to check out the album for yourself. And who knows, maybe it will excite you as much as it excited me when I first discovered it. Sadly, due to copyright restrictions, I can't use audio examples from the album, but where suitable, I will indicate particular songs and their timestamp that I'm referring to. If you enjoy the video, please hit the subscribe button below. Hit the notification bell so you receive notifications when I post new videos and please give the video a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. If you have any comments regarding the album being discussed or the video, leave them below and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. On with this episode's album, it's Fleetwood Mac's Rumours. Rumours is an album that pretty much defined the band from the mid 70s right up to the present day and recalls a time when artistic endeavours mixed with high emotions, alcohol and drugs were a heady mix. The band's previous album Fleetwood Mac was already topping the charts in the US in 76, although it took around a year to scale the charts when the band were midway through recording rumours, so the record company exerted pressure on the band to deliver a platinum plated effort for their next release. Making such a record was hard enough, let alone all five band members having to deal with relationship breakups with each other in the case of two couples. The trials and tribulations surrounding the making of this album are well documented, yet somehow the band tapped into a rich vein of songwriting that would achieve life-changing results, make them rich beyond their wildest dreams, and seal their reputation as one of the world's biggest bands. Upon the album's release in February 77, it topped the charts on both sides of the Atlantic, spawning four hit singles and received the Grammy for Best Album in 1978. Current figures suggest that Rumours has shifted over 45 million copies worldwide. John McVie is the archetypal bassist, an integral part of the rhythm section that provides the heartbeat of the band. For much of this album he used Alembic series basses, one of which may have included a graphite necked instrument, courtesy of Moses Graphite. Fatboy DIs were used in the studio along with various amplification depending on the song requirements with a small pig nose amp used on one particular track. The rounded bass tone across the whole album would suggest he used flat wound strings to dampen the intrinsic alembic sparkle somewhat. From the outset it becomes apparent fairly quickly that the lyrics and content are personal to each writer and are mostly written about other members of the band. Secondhand news certainly alludes to Lindsay Buckingham's newfound single status having split from Stevie Nicks while Dreams is her reply to their separation. McVie's bassline is simple root note stuff, but nevertheless this is totally the right part for the track, working seamlessly with Fleetwood's bass drum pattern. The inflection at 2 minutes 20 is the mark of the man, nothing flash, but a little something to add the merest movement in what is a regimented bass part. Just soak up that bass tone. Whoever had the final say on the running order certainly needed their wits about them as not only were they dealing with the best musical flow for the album, but also the statements being made by each writer. Don't Stop with its driving shuffle illustrates what a solid rhythm section understanding Fleetwood and McVie had, and still have. Rock solid, unwavering, with no need for flashness, anything else would merely take away from the power of the song, although some of the passing notes in the outro choruses hint at his library of connecting phrases. The bass part to You Can Go Your Own Way starts with a pedalled eighth note part over three chord changes while the chorus has more movement driving the chorus forward and what a tone in the descending line of each chord change. And then we have The Chain, notoriously famous in the UK for its use on the Formula One TV coverage, the song itself went through many changes and was formed out of a number of songs while being re-recorded several times. For us low end lovers, the second half of the song from 3 minutes 4 is all that matters and what a bass motif it is, the pick tone is instantly recognisable and a real joy to play. 
The verse groove of You Make Loving Fun is so simple, not unlike Dreams in its simplicity, while the chorus bass line with its held notes and passing notes offers some light and shade, weaving in and out of the vocal parts. Oh Daddy refers to Fleetwood's status within the band, while Gold Dust Woman is about Stevie Nicks' life in LA and her drug use during this period. The exquisite Songbird by Christine McVie needs no introduction and remains a fitting counterpoint to the subject matter played out during the writing and recording of this legendary album. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button below, hit the notification bell so you receive notifications when I post new videos, and please give the video a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. If you have any comments regarding the album or the video, leave them below and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. Look forward to seeing you here again on Brooks's Bass Corner.